Carlos Enriquez on the drive, and I'm still repping. Although a jury found me guilty on two counts of assault and battery, it does not change my truth. Cause the ones who was dead, he ain't dead no more. And the ones who was dead, he ain't here no more. Come on. I heard him say I own me. But I don't even know him. Cause the ones who was dead, he ain't there no more. And the ones who was dead, he ain't here no more. Has been my love of service and the truth of my innocence. Carlos Enriquez. Yes, sir. Former state rep. Yes, sir. Yours, mine. Yeah. What's going on, man? Oh, you know, another day in paradise. I'm still out here repping. And I'm, uh, before we even get started, I got to say, I'm, I know it's not might not be the cool thing to do, but I'm going to throw my seatbelt on. Not that you've ever had a crash on the drive, but, <laughs> you know, I worry about these things. Say, so, you know, you got a family to provide for. You know what? You know. You know, I'm gonna throw my seatbelt on. I don't want to too. be the last episode of the drive because we ain't have our seatbelts on. <laughs> Hold on, let me have that. Dudes, is 40 plus now, late 30s. Hold on. Oh, he slapped me. Y'all see that? He slapped me all in the face with the Hold sweater. On. See that? We good? Damn see that? that? Good. Uh, airbags are working. All I right. can't do my cross promoting with my shirts, you can see. There you go. Tuck it under the arm. You know how <laughs> when you want it to be cool when you get it under the arm. Look at this shit. Already, politician get in the car now. Look, I'm in fucking seatbelt. Just trying to follow the rules, man. God damn it. So what's the game plan, man? What you, where you going from here, man? Well, well, just back to the original game plan. I really haven't changed the game plan. It's just the, uh, well, honestly, I haven't changed the goal. The game plan has changed. You know, the goal is always to figure out how we get what we need in our neighborhoods, right? How we keep kids from dying. Okay. How we can own more houses, more businesses. Um, how we can keep policies from really hurting. And, you know, my my game plan before was to do that through elected office, through showing people in the neighborhood, you know, what could happen, what needs to happen, and how it needs to happen. But not being in that seat, I had to take a different course to do it. Okay, so, um, I, I got a lot of questions. I'm sure people watching have their own questions, but um, first, I'll, let's let's go back. Like, why? Right. Why did you get into politics? And politics. Politics was in my household growing up, to be honest with you. Uh, moms and pops were very active in politics. So it was something at the dinner table, you know, the spaghetti was on the table and they're talking about the school committee and the quality of education mm. and housing and things like that. So some of it stuck a little bit, some of mm. it didn't. Um, I saw my father run for office in 1999 for city council. Um, and it really hit me when I was 25, which is man, it was like 14 years ago now. So let's pretend for a second that the viewers don't know who your father is okay. or your mother. Yeah, yeah. Who's your mother? Who's your um, father? My father, um, the, the late, great Julio Henriquez, um, immigrant from Panama, moved here, started his family here in Roxbury, okay. uh, raised three wonderful children. He was always involved in youth coaching, um, education, advocacy, just really making sure that people in the neighborhood had the things that they needed or the things that they deserve and was willing to fight for them. Mm -hmm. um, my mother, um, we met here in Boston when she was going to BU. Um, she had spent her life in housing, working around housing. Um, her, most, her last job in Boston was she was the director of the BHA. Um, and then she, in 2008, she got tapped by the president to go work for his administration to run uh, public housing for the, the country. Okay. So that's where I get my political, my activism roots from. We have a squad behind us. Okay. Now there's 500 okay. of us standing side by side going, all right, what are you going to do? Because we vote, we give money, we spend money. What are you going to do for the 500 of us? Okay. So now it's about how we get the 500. Because we can keep trusting one person. We can keep waiting for the next Martin Luther King, the next Malcolm X, the next Carlos Enriquez. Yeah. But as long as that person stands alone, they can be taken out with just one shot. Gotcha. Part, pardon the pun, but you know what I mean? Got gotcha. you. One person can be taken out pretty easily. Taking out 500 requires a whole different game plan. Uh, gotcha. I'm working at Kinko's in, in Harvard Square. And you know, I'm, a, I'm an assistant manager and I've brought probably like nine nine of the young people from the neighborhood to to work here, because I'm the hiring manager. Um, it's their first job. You know, they got Corn Rolls and Tim's and we're trying to get a set with the dress code. And you know, I want to make sure that they have a path, you know, similar to what I've had. And uh, there was a, a brother that was working there who would watch me do customer service. You know, he was from the neighborhood as well. And I would kick it with him a little bit, you know, spend some time with him uh, at studios and studio sessions and things like that. And he said something to me profound one day. He hit me with, uh, he said, you know, I see you talk to 
uh, corporate CEOs at four o'clock and they love you, but you can be just as comfortable on the block talking to hustlers in the neighborhood um, and do some do some around the way. And he said you should think about politics. I want to get you, let's say I want to get you a man in the room. You know, maybe maybe there's got to be champagne in the room. You know what I mean? Maybe there's got to be champagne gang or <laughs> but, but you know, but maybe that pulls them in, or maybe it's a maybe it's a uh, y'all are both parents. I got you. So maybe I'm talking about school, okay. and that pulls y'all. You know, y'all have young children, so you're concerned about education. Okay. Now, now I need to give you all the information I know about education that came through me. And y'all like, yeah, I know that's true because I see that happen to my daughter. I see that happen to my son. Okay. I'm with this dude because he's speaking. He's saying what I need to say, but I don't have time to say it. So I trust that he's going there because we have this. We have this relationship. We have this communication. Okay. That's what we lack. We don't have. You know, when's the last time you talked to an elected official? Well, me, when's the last time you talked to an elected official? Right before you. <laughs> right before you had that. Right before you that one shot. <laughs> yeah, right. So without that relationship being built, they're gonna keep picking us off one at a time. It's easy to pick off a city council. It's easy to sort of push you to the side. Oh yeah, that city council is always complaining about racism. Put them over there. Got you. Okay. So you're saying numbers? It's got to, It's a numbers game. No matter what game you're playing, whether you're getting record spins, you know whatever it is. You if you ain't getting numbers, you're not really in the game. So what's that? If you don't mind, I mean I don't know if the people know that there was a, after you were in there was a situation that happened and. It, cost you A, your C, and B, and it cost you your freedom. It cost me a lot more than that, but yeah. yeah. Okay, well, what did it cost you? What? I mean, so, you know, for in politics, politics is like, if I could liken it to something, it's very much like, I guess, being in the street where, except the, the, what you lose is not, you don't lose your life, but everything is built around your, your character, everything is built around your reputation. Um, so my mm -hmm. reputation that I spent 10 plus years trying to build and enhance from running an after-school program to uh, going to these community meetings and being part of the process, that's taken away in an instant because of a false accusation. Mm. Um, so that was what is the most damaging because after you've spent so long in it, your reputation is kind of how you eat. You're trading on your reputation. Okay. So you can get a job based on your reputation. Um, now, I cannot get jobs based on what the damage has been done to my reputation. So what was the accusation? So a, a young lady that I was seeing, um, this was our sixth time, it, seeing each other um, in person and uh, I went to pick her up one night to hang out she was coming back to to my place um, and we you know we're, we're going back and forth and we exchanged words I told her I said something to the effect of you know I don't know why you're bugging you're not my girlfriend but you're acting like one um, it's like a July night and she kind of just flew off the handle was like you know what let me out I'm getting out of the car right here we're over by Northeastern not too far from here we're, we're out by Northeastern I pull over to the side of the road you know, I, listen, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna beg you to stay. It's a warm night, I'm not gonna wait here forever, you coming or not. She walked off and goes into uh, one of the dorm buildings and I go home. And so I wake up in the morning to knocks at my door and the doorbell ring, I look outside, it's two Boston police officers. Uh, I open the door, they ask me my name, I tell them my name, and they said you're under arrest. So what's at the top of your list right now? Like what's on your radar immediately? The top of my list right now is really just infrastructure. It's really just organizing and mobilizing. So. Let me give you an example of uh, mobilizing and, and organizing right now. Okay. Kid gets shot and killed in the street. We all feel it. Yeah. We've all had a friend lost that way, a family member lost that way. Yeah. And you're angry, but you don't know what to do besides being angry, put up an RIP post, and, and we go on and deal with that tragedy on our own. Yeah. Other communities don't move like that. Okay. Other communities are organized and mobilized. In Western Massachusetts, when I was a rep, they got farms in Western Massachusetts where they grow farm animals. When they need something moved, a bill change or a policy change, there was one day we got, I think it was like 1,800 emails from Western Massachusetts about farm animals. Now, that for that whole week, now this happened three years ago, I'm still telling this story because this is how it impacted me. They shut down the servers at the state house. And, and clogged everybody's email. So that week, every rep, no matter whether they were from the hood in Boston or the suburbs of Western we're Massachusetts, talking we're talking about, about farm animals. Farm animals. But there's never a week where we're talking about the young man that got shot because we don't never get 1,800 emails about homicide or about unemployment. Because no matter for the last 20, 30 years, because it ain't a new issue, our leaders have never organized us to that level. 
Gotcha. And never gave us an action to take and say wow. tomorrow. So I'm waiting. I'm saying for what? Mm. They're saying for kidnapping, assault and battery, grand larceny, theft. I ended up being arrested that day. Um, wow. So I'm taken by surprise trying to figure out where, where this is all coming from. Um, this goes on for a while. So now that's the beginning of the damage of my reputation. Two years, my trial waits for two years. Okay, let me let me stop you right there. Right. So, so now the charges have been set. Yep. And you are still. I'm still a state rep. State rep. Yep. That's 2012. How does that affect? What happens then? Are your do your peers? Do they do they surround? Do they circle the wagons? Do they begin? To, uh, they're standing there as long as we moving in the right direction. As long as everybody has the knowledge. Right. Because the leader doesn't have to be in front. Leader can lead from the middle of the pack. Or lead from behind the pack. You know what I mean? You don't know who the leader is sometimes. If you're moving effectively, as long as everybody's moving that way. That's a great message. That's a great message. You don't have to leave from the front. No. Nah. You can leave from behind. So I got a question though. And this is personal. This is this is not okay, so whenever I, a police officer kills somebody, the response from the wherever it is, from the media is, is that how why are you guys complaining about Oh um, man the this this cop killing this black kid but you don't complain about the black kid killing the black kid yeah what do you, what's your, i have mine i just want to hear i mean it's a it's a falsehood so i actually got into that the mayor and the police commissioner made a comment like that this summer when a seven-year-old was killed on bowden street a shot on bowden street he wasn't killed they said where's the outrage right right i'm outraged every time we lose a life on the street i sit in my living room i talk to people about it i'm hurt sometimes it's a kid that i know i've right. lost i've lost friends Right. So I'm, I know what the outrage feels like. Right. So one, it's white on white crime. Whites are killed, 80% of the whites are killed by white people. Right, right. And that, that number is the same for black, Latino, Asian. Right. So that's a false, it's just a distraction. Right, okay. So I don't even okay. feed into it because, okay. and then to say we're not outraged means that all those peace walks we've been on with the little deep brown peace institute, Tina Cherry, Candlelight vigils we stood outside of, um, all the kids man. wearing pins with the purple ribbon on it. That's a, a sign of outrage. That's a sign right. of being upset. That's action right. that we're taking. The t-shirts, the marches, So to say the we're not outraged, I take that as like a F you. And right. that's what I give back to them when they say that. Like, I don't want to hear that. So why do you think they're comfortable enough with saying that? Because to me, any somebody, anybody with half, an, half a brain knows that this is just ridiculous. It's a silly so ass it's a Because it's just a, they just throw it out there. And we're, because we're not, we don't mobilize and say anything back. So right. who says something back? Right, got you. I got you. Okay. You know, it's, it's that, and it, the system is jacked like that, where they'll, where they'll play that game. So, and it's not even the same level. You know, it's apples and oranges. Right. So me shooting you right now is, is neither one of us are sworn to protect the other one. I ain't right. take no oath to protect exactly. you. Exactly. Like, I don't get, and they're the commissioners, or they're the, like, how could they not know that? How could they? They know that, but their loyalty is to their, their brotherhood. They swore oath to, also to their brothers. So here's, so here's the thing. In, in the streets, if you're in the streets, if you live in the streets and move in the streets, you have a code of silence. Right. That code of silence is no different than the thin blue line that police officers have. Right. It's no different than the thin blue line or the code of silence that elected officials have with each other. Or right. I'm not going to run somebody against you or I won't do this to you or I won't say this about you publicly. Right. Everybody has those rules. Why would you want, why would you ask me to break that rule if you won't break, if you won't break the rule? And you know the rule will cost me my life. I don't ask a single mother to snitch. Well, it's not snitching because she's not a co-defendant, right? right? But I, I expect a single mother to consider her children before she calls the police and says, I saw a crime outside. Right. Because her calling the police, if the police don't handle it right, they she come to her knock on her door, she and her children could be at risk of their lives. Right. Why, the ultimate you know I mean? price. The ultimate price. So like in the streets. Like yeah, yeah. So the ones that are close to you, um, your real your real friends circle the wagon. They come to you, you know, what do you need? How can I be helpful? Tell me, you know, what happened. Um, and I got I gotta say that it's important because real friends do ask you the truth. You know, they're gonna they might ride with you regardless, but you they you owe it to them to tell you the truth. So, you know, certain colleagues asked me what happened and, and I described it to them and they knew, you know, they made a judgment based on them knowing me and my character. And some just stepped away. Some stepped away completely. Um, and in the game, you kind of understand that as well. You kind of charge into the game. Like, all right, they're not, they're not messing with me right now. Um, and that's cool. But it made me kind of double down on my work even more and just focus on what I needed to do, um, which was my focus anyway. I wasn't really too tied up in it. Okay. Okay. So so then what happens? You, you're, 
the charges, you come, you wait for it to end. Right, so then it's, it's in the news all day, every day, but I'm back to work. Um, so, you know, then it's legally, it's all the motions, the, the, pre, the motions for this and filing a motion for that. Um, you know, I got arraigned in Roxbury. They moved the case to, to Cambridge, um, you know, securing lawyers and all that. So I'm working through it. Um, 2013, the day before pretrial starts, I'm sitting at home the, the night uh, the night before pretrial, and my phone starts ringing, and I get like three or three missed calls. I pick up one and I say hello, and it's like there's breathing on the phone. You know, it's like it's like the the big interlude, like fake. <laughs> and and um, I finally say, you know, speak now, forever hold your peace, and I hear a voice, and it's it's this young woman's voice who I who, who accused me of this bullshit I like strategy. I like being able to plan and. and and figure out how we're gonna how we're gonna win. Right. Um, that's that. So that's what drew me to it. I like winning, and I like the strategy of winning. So whether it's a chess game or politics, like that's where it is. And you can get involved if you're a father and you feel like you've been getting jerked over your visitation rights yep. or alimony or child support. There's room in the political game for you. You're needed because the people that are discussing it and voting for it aren't going through it like you're going through it. Gotcha. So there's fatherhood groups that need more men to balance out the child support system, to ba balance out shared parenting. You know what I mean? There's, gotcha. there's a need for that. So when we're talking about re-entry, the dudes that have been in jail ain't in those rooms. There's a bunch of there's a bunch of Harvard students sitting there with their shirt and tie on and the cardigans. Now I got my cardigan on too, but I feel like I'm the spy in the room. Like I'm the dude from the hood that knows the dudes that have gone to jail and I want to pass them the, the information. But leaving it up to them to rep for us, I tell them, you know, get involved in politics. Just get in your lane. You ain't got to get in all the lanes, but you got kids, get involved in school politics. You don't have your kids and you don't have visitation, get involved with a, with a fatherhood movement. And I know I can link you to those. You want you just want your park clean to be able to walk to the corner store without seeing needles? There's a, there's a lane for that. There's pressure. You know, and that's everybody got a Facebook page, everybody got a Twitter. So just think about the content you put out there and, and leave, help mobilize people. Just run your block. So that if I deliver the message to you, like say, Remember we were talking about, you know, making sure that every school had X, Y, and Z. Every school had books. I need you to activate your people today. Today we all calling. It ain't going to be farm animals today. Today we calling about inner city schools. Mm, activate you. your people. On the, on, the, on the 3rd of January, I need you to activate your people. Got you. That's politics. And I'm like, listen, what do you, what do you want? You, know, you have a restraining order on me, a bullshit restraining order, but you have a restraining order on me and you're calling me. What do you want? Oh, I want to see you. Now nah, you're not gonna see me. You took out a restraining order on me. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna put myself in. in Wait, so, the, so the woman who pressed charges called you. Called me. Okay. Took out a restraining order. She calls me. Okay. Prank called me a few times. Third time she finally starts talking, um, and she's adamant about seeing me, telling me she wants to make things right. She's so sorry, and I'm like, if you want to make it right, you need to tell the truth. That's the only thing that can really make it right. Like you telling me that it's a lie. I already know it's a lie. So I need you to tell my lawyer, or I need you to tell the judge that it's a lie. That's that's the important thing to me. So she's still adamant about seeing me and I'm not seeing her. I picked up the phone, I called my lawyer. My lawyer says, in Massachusetts, she has a restraining order against me. If she were to show up and ring my doorbell and I open the door, I violated the restraining order. Holy shit. Yeah, that's crazy in itself and that's a law that needs to be rewritten or looked at because that happens more often than people believe. But nonetheless, so that happens. Wait a minute. And that's a did you know moment. Yeah, that's a did you know because that <laughs> happened. Let me say that again. Domestic violence is serious, but there are people that manipulate the system. And it's crazy that you could have a restraining order against you and that person can show up at your house, ring your doorbell, and if you answer the door, you violated that restraining order and you can be taken to jail. Don't let people think that because there's a title there that you, you ain't trained. You, we've been, we all train in politics, especially coming from the hood, we all train. Right. We make the code switch where we out here and it's the you know I mean, you know what I mean? You get the dap yeah. and it's all right, you know. Yeah. And then we go to work and it's hey, how you doing, Bill? Good to see you today. You know what I mean? Was, yeah. How's yeah, everything with the kids? Good? Good. I got you. That's, it's the same language. You just gotta you just switch it and come back. And it ain't about being phony, it's about getting to where you need to be to move both ways. So that's the next one. That's it. Is that you just touched on it. What, what how do you so for me I'm saying to you, um, I ain't fake. I'm not fake. Right. Uh, uh, what? How is that not being fake? How is it? I, I mean, who goes to work and thugs it out every day at work? Right. Nobody. Right. The customer calls and hey, how you doing today? Nobody. 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 I mean, those that thug it out all day, they thug it out all day. They're not going to work. But they don't really thug it out all day because they go home. 
Right. You yeah. gotta love your kid. You be, hey, I love you. How you doing? Right. I mean, so it's not. It's not. There are levels where you are in a room with people right. that you don't, you don't talk like. To your girlfriend the same way you talk to your man. Right. You code switch. You don't, you don't talk to your mom the same, same way, way you, you talk, talk to, to your man. girl. Yeah. Or yeah. So you, yeah. you switch you it up. It's just yeah. being appropriate. Now you don't gotta go all the way. You don't have to change the way you dress. I wouldn't say I don't expect you to go to show up in a three piece suit right. and wingtip shoes just because you're coming to a meeting. Right. 